Hi everyone! In this video, I will be assembling and testing this industrial rope machine, which has been sitting in the back corner of my workshop for about nine months now. I ordered this about a year ago. It took about three months to arrive, and by then I was in the middle of working on another big project, namely my radiative cooling paint project, which is still in progress, by the way. Don't give up on that series just yet. Now, the cool thing about this machine, and the reason why I really wanted to purchase one, is that this can take fibers of all sorts of different origins, like straw, grass, various industrial waste materials, and turn them into usable rope. In that way, you actually take waste products, turn them into something practical. Some of the parts I can already tell are pretty shoddy. This bearing on the end, for example, does not quite fit into the housing they sent with this, so I'm sure there's gonna be a few things that I'm going to need to fix along the way. For now, let's get to assembling this thing, starting with the frame, and hopefully the rest of the assembly will fall into place from there, because no instructions whatsoever came with this machine. It looks pretty straightforward, though. Now, this is the key mechanical component, and when the main shaft is driven, it spins these cones the same direction. There are a few problems that I've noticed with this piece of the machine. First of all, there's a bearing in this sleeve, which is a loose fit. So I'm going to have to take this off, see if I can maybe shim that bearing up so that the shaft doesn't move around so much. I found in my scrap bin a few pieces of scrap rubber. Now these gears right here that these cones are inserted into, these aren't riding in any bearings at all. All right, well it has been a few days and I am back now with a roll of graphite foil that I have received in the mail. This is pretty cool stuff. It's electrically conductive, it's very lubricating. What I'm going to do is cut this into thin strips to line the cast iron channels in these cutouts and that should provide lubrication to these gears. I've added some rubber shims in here and I am ready to bolt this back together. Yeah, there we go. No more wiggle woggle. This gear's on good. These gears seem lubricated. I'm ready to assemble the rest of the machine. It works. <laughs> it's actually a lot quieter than I anticipated. At this point, I can give a brief demonstration of how this machine is meant to work. It has two cones that both rotate in the same direction. Starting with a handful of natural fibers, if I were to turn this into rope by hand, I would tie a knot in one end and then divide the bundle into two sections. A two-stranded rope is formed by turning each of these sections in the same direction. My right hand is turning this side clockwise, and my left hand is also turning this side clockwise. As I continue to twist both sections, the grass automatically wraps around itself in a double helix, forming rope. This machine with its two rotating cones is meant to work in exactly the same way. The rest of the machine is really just there to pull the rope as it forms and bundle it on the spool. If you'd like to learn more about making rope by hand, I have several videos on that topic. So now that I have this fully assembled and ready to use, I have to figure out how to actually use it. <laughs> This is a piece of factory equipment, so it is not made to be user-friendly. I think what needs to be done is you need to actually have a piece of rope threaded through the mechanics of the machine before you can actually start making more rope. So what I will do is find some particularly long strands of straw, feed them through this machine, and then tape them to the end of that rope and hope that that's all this takes. 
All right, check this out as I turn the machine by hand. This is pretty cool. Oh no. Oh, look at that. Oh, it worked so good on the first little bit and then my further splices just didn't work. So that was only a partially successful run. As soon as I started adding additional splices of the straw on, I ran into problems. I think one of the keys to using this successfully is going to be prep. I have to make sure that I have plenty of straight fibers to feed into this machine as it needs it. First, I need to like comb these things out, get rid of the shorter stuff and have enough on hand. Oh, and we're broken free. Let's inspect our result here. <laughs> Straw is not gonna cut it for this. Really wish I knew that before I uh, busted open the bale in the barn. <laughs> For this test, I have moved on from the straw to grass that I cut from around my yard. This has an average length of at least 24 inches, so it should work much better. It should be easier to feed in fresh strands as they run out. <laughs> Let's see how the rope is. <clears throat> First of all, I'll unplug this deadly thing. Hey, that is not bad for a third attempt. This is definitely weak. There are plenty of places in this rope where I did not feed the grass in properly. And so there's lots of weak spots, but I'm sure that's all my fault. I think the machine itself is working perfectly. Now I just need to find a source of long fiber grass or some kind of straw that hasn't been baled, I suppose. Maybe that would run better. Let's go for a hike, see what we can find. Maybe I can at least get some more grass like this. Well, this rope machine has given me quite a challenge. I have gone through multiple materials trying to successfully make rope, first starting with straw in a rectangular bale, as you saw, that ended up having very short fibers in it, so instead I switched to hay from round bales. Now, this hay supposedly is processed by a machine that rolls up the full-length grass, and so I should have had a longer product, but in my experience, the material that I grabbed from a round bale, it was still quite short. Next, I found an invasive reed here in Michigan. This is called Phragmite, and this actually might have worked if this were a different time of year. Right now, it's snowing in mid-November, and so this stuff, it still has some life in it, but it's pretty dry and didn't feed through the machine very well. The fibers snapped apart, and kind of like bamboo, it has little knuckles in each section that tend to snap rather than twist along into a nice, long, fibrous rope. The last attempt was to use cattails. So I'm going to try to get the ones that uh, do not have a cattail head on them because that would be a whole nother mess in my barn. For example, if I take something like this, well, first of all, it's got the fluff here. <laughs> but also a solid rod running through the center. So if I take the ones without the cattail head, then all I get are the soft, flexible reeds. Now these actually ended up working for me in my machine, but not right away. They require a little bit of processing I found because they're too dry and brittle in this state fresh out of the swamp. 
The first step to processing these for making rope is to step on them. Crush the material flat because there's actually a little bit of a three-dimensional shape to these reeds. They have a foam core and that three-dimensional shape actually keeps them rigid. By stomping on them, pressing them flat with my feet, that breaks that structure and allows them to wind into rope much more successfully. In addition to that, they need to be moistened. They need to have a little bit of water reintroduced to their structure in order to gain some flexibility. So I can mist them down with water. In this case, I'm actually using water with a little bit of rubbing alcohol mixed into it. Rubbing alcohol is actually significantly wetter than water. Believe it or not, that's a thing. Being especially wet means that it can wet surfaces that normally water would roll off of. Alcohol will stick to those surfaces and then it much more readily absorbs into them and gives them back that flexibility that we need for making our rope. I have my cattails right next to me here and to prepare them to feed in, all you do is take the leaves and peel them off the stalk one at a time. This one was particularly easy. So I'll start with two leaves on each side, feed them through my cones. And this time I'm just going to press them all the way through the machine until they come out here where I have my, my pull rope ready and waiting, attaching these fibers to the end here with a bit of tape. Nice and slow, because I'm not good at this yet. Well, you can see that I'm still pretty shy about using this thing. I definitely have a hard time keeping pace with the machine. Actually, what I just noticed is that this rope hopped off the guide. Put that back on there and tighten it up. But it's going pretty well. I think I have, oh, probably 10 feet already. And what was that, about a minute worth of feeding this at very low speed. Let's see if I can keep going, see how much rope I get through when I move through this whole stack. That was awesome. I had no fear at any point of that rope breaking, which is way better than when I was attempting to use this with grass and straw. I think I have maybe, that's gotta be at least 50 feet of rope there in under 10 minutes of work. Maybe an additional five minutes for the amount of time it took me to gather the cattails in the swamp. All right, let's take it off the spool. I haven't tried taking this spool off the machine yet. Let's unplug it so I don't accidentally turn it on and break an arm. It should be easy to release. Take this out. And does the whole thing just come off or what? Oh. Whoa, I didn't know it did that. That is pretty cool. I'll unwind this. It doesn't need to be on this spool and that'll allow me to see how much length I have. And here is my yield. <laughs> I think I might've undershot it with the 50 foot guess. Let's find out. I got a tape measure around here somewhere. All right, so here's how we'll measure this. I have my tape measure. We'll measure it 25 feet at a time. Right there is 25 feet. Let's do the rest. Wow, I was pretty close with my guess because <laughs> we're at the end of the rope here and it is 49 feet or 14.6 meters of cattail rope in total for about 10 or 15 minutes work. Not bad. Well, one of the reasons why making natural rope is of interest to me is this guy. 
You all remember Moe's? He is a Kayik parrot, and he enjoys chewing things. A lot. Natural rope is a great toy for him, and it can also be useful for making lots of other things. As a precaution to make sure this rope is free of mold, which might have been growing on the cattails this time of year in the swamp, I threw this in my oven at the lowest setting for about an hour. And that should make sure it's safe for Moe's to chew on. Cattails will be a good option for me to make rope in the short term, but I would like to try straw one more time. This time using a good old fashioned scythe to cut it down by hand at full length. I think that would work much better than what I was able to find in machine processed bales. Well, this video's sponsor is Brilliant.org, my favorite way to learn math, science, and computer science with thousands of lessons. What I like best about Brilliant is how they teach through interactive problem solving, starting with very simple building blocks. Since you learn something by assembling all the components from the ground up, by the time you've reached the end of a lesson, not only do you understand a completely new concept, but you know exactly how and why it works. Recently, I've started a brilliant series of courses about knowledge and uncertainty. Just give one of these lessons a try and you'll see how much they hold your interest. Did you know that English has 10 times as many unique sounding syllables as Japanese? Now I understand language in a completely new way because of this lesson. Every time I log into Brilliant, I see a new topic I'd like to learn more about. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash Nighthawk, or click on the link in the video description below. The first 200 to do so will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while. I'm back to work now on new projects, and videos should be arriving more frequently. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.